Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you've all found the talks that you've been going to so far uh, interesting and insightful. Um, so as my as the description has said and um, my bio and everything says, my name's Kapil Pal. I'm a cloud engineer at IBM. Um, I work specifically in the integration space and over the next sort of half an hour or so, um, I'm going to walk you through the rise of no-code API builders and be discussing what they are, how they can be used, and trying to look ahead at what this means for the future of traditional backend development and, of course, developers. Before I get into that, I'd just like to spend a few seconds introducing myself. Um, so like I said, my name is Kapil Pal. I'm a cloud engineer at IBM. I specifically focus on backend and infrastructure development um, within the integration space. Been here for just over two years. I joined straight out of university and I spent the whole of that time in the Cloud Pack for integration team. Prior to that, I spent a year here as part of my degree where I worked in an infrastructure team for a product called AppConnect Enterprise. During this time, I've gained experience in a number of areas which are fundamental to cloud native computing, as well as becoming a SME in Kubernetes, OpenShift and operators. Okay, that's enough about me. Let's move on to why we're all here. So just what are no-code API builders? Well, they pretty much do what it says on the tin. They allow users to create entire API-driven backend systems without having to write a single line of code. These builders are typically drag and drop flow editors where users can drag in different nodes to perform different actions and use connectors to manipulate and transfer data between them. Each node represents a different action ranging from database queries to integrations with external applications such as Salesforce, Google Sheets and others. By connecting these nodes, you can manipulate and share data between them. I've included some of these platforms on this slide. They are Xano, no-code API, if this, then that, Node-RED, and IBM App Connect Enterprise. Those who have used if this, then that, or Node-RED will no doubt be thinking, but Kapil, these aren't API builders. And you'd be right, they aren't. They're generic no-code platforms. However, I, the reason that I included them in this list is to highlight that you don't need to use a dedicated platform to build an API without, without writing any code. At this point, I think it'd be worth mentioning that just because these are called no-code, doesn't mean you can't write any code. A lot of these platforms will have an option for you um, to add your own custom code or connectors to perform bespoke or complex operations that aren't supported out of the box. So let's work through an example scenario. In this scenario, I own a bakery. Let's call it the Happy Bakery. And we make custom celebration cakes. Customers send us a message to put on a cake and can, if they want, send a photo to put on it as well. All of this is done through our website. So we need an API that supports two endpoints. We need a create endpoint and we need a read endpoint. The read endpoint is pretty simple. It's just a case of retrieving and returning the details of an order. The other endpoint is the create endpoint, which is a bit more complicated and needs to do a fair bit more. This will accept a post request and will upload uh, the customer's image to an object store, if one is provided, add the details of the cake to the database, and then send a noti notification to the baker's Slack channel so they're aware of the new order. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if this was me, it would take me a fair few hours to be able to build a test and deploy this if I were to make it myself. With that in mind, I'm now going to build this API using IBM's no-code API builder offering at Connect Enterprise. And let's see how much quicker and easier it is than doing it all manually. So here's my App Connect Enterprise um, instance. Before uh, this talk, I went through and uh, connected all of my different accounts. Um, this took a, a matter of minutes. Um, all I had to do was go to my catalog, go to applications, and select all of the relevant. Um, applications that I'm going to be using and fill out the details. So to do this, I need to create, I need to go to the dashboard and I need to create a flow for an API. Once this is done, I need to name my API. So I'm going to call mine the Happy Bakery. 
And the first thing that I need to do is create my data model. So I need to give this model a name. So I'm going to call this order. This is going to be modeling the orders that we receive from our customers. Once I've created my model, I need to fill out all of the fields within there. So within here, I'm going to have an ID field. That's going to be my identification field, um, my unique primary key, um, if this was a SQL database. But then within that, I'm going to have the name of the person who's ordering it, their email address, their phone number, the message that they want to put on the cake, and the image uh, they would like if they want it. Once I've done this, I then need to go and create my operations. So like I said, there were two uh, two operations that I needed to create. I needed a read endpoint and I needed a create endpoint. So let's start with the read endpoint as this is the uh, simpler one. So to, to implement it, all I do is I click implement flow and this is our um, editor. So I need to add a new uh, node to this flow. For this, I'm going to be using Cloudant, which is IBM's NoSQL database offering. Um, and I'm looking to retrieve a document. So immediately, this has given me this edit screen. And you can see that it's pre-filled um, the database um, names. I don't need to worry about remembering it or having things like typos. And then add a condition. So I want where the document ID matches the ID in the uh, request URL, and I only want to return one. As you'll notice here, it's also aware of 204s and 404s, so different HTTP um, return codes. Again, this makes life easier as we don't have to worry about any of that. And then finally, I need to map my response. So my response body is just going to be equal to everything that I retrieve from the uh, database. So the document ID, uh, then within here, edit expression and get the document data. So uh, dot name, email, phone, message, and image, there is one. And that's my read endpoint. So already significantly quicker than if I'd had to do this manually. One thing I'd also like to highlight is the ability to test from within the editor. So we can do two things. We can do the equivalent of unit tests where we test individual connectors at a time. So I can edit my test data here to have um, whatever data I want in there. So just put in a random number and then press this, try this action button and this will test the connector as you'd expect, it'd return a 404 because I have nothing in this database at the moment. Um, but if I used an ID that existed, it would return 200. Or I can do a, uh, I can try the whole flow, which is sort of an end to end, and as, a, as you'd expect again, another 404. So that's my read endpoint done. Next is the write endpoint. So this one's a little bit more complicated. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to have an if condition because we only want to update, uh, upload the image to the um, object store if it exists. So if image is not empty, we can then add our cloud objects storage and create object. Again, this has pre-filled our buckets that already exist in my S3 storage. Again, no worries about um, typos or having to fill it out manually. One of the benefits of doing this through uh, the Cloud Pack for integration, as I'm doing here, is um, we have this AI mapping. So um, there's an AI engine within this application, which is suggesting things that I can have within um, this field. So as you can see, it's suggesting I use the image. So that's what I'm going to use for the content. For the name, now I could just name this something trivial, but as this needs to be unique for every image, let's do something that we can make sure is unique. So the first thing we can do is add a timestamp. So name it after the milliseconds. Um, there is a possibility that two requests might come in at the same time. So we can also 
uh, encode the, the customer's name. So uh, we put name and UTF-8. This will then do a um, base64 encoding of the name and the, type, the timestamp. So therefore, we can pretty much guarantee that it will be unique. And then finally, I want to make this a PNG. And that's all that we need to do for the image upload. We then need to go back to Cloudint, and we, this time we want to create a document. So again, we'd like to select the orders database. We will leave the ID field blank, as this is going to be auto-generated by Cloudint. And we just want to set this to um, the object. And that's our create. Uh, document and then finally we'd like to post a message in a slack channel so that we can um make sure that the bakers know that there's a new order that's come through uh, so we want to post in the orders channel and we would like to call it and as i've done this before it's recognized that and given me a suggestion of a message that i've already used um, And then finally, <coughs> finally, we need to create the response body. So the response body will just be, we'll just return that document ID. And that's our create done. So again, we can test this with arbitrary values. And as you can see, that was successful. And there was a new message posted on our Slack channel. So one of the other benefits of doing this through um, Cloud Pack for integration as opposed to a standalone App Connect offering is if we start this flow, this is now running live, and you can see that we've got this test tab has appeared. This test tab is our Open API document. This is now, I can download this or I, I can share this with my front end development team. So I don't have to worry about explaining the explaining the UI to them and walking them through it. You can, as with a Swagger document, you can test from within. It will give you code generation um, for each of these. So I can try it, or I can just copy the code and put it straight into my, um, into my front end code. The other tab is the gateway tab. So this is powering, being powered by IBM's API gateway offering. Um, which is called uh, IBM API Connect. Um, this uh, offering will provide authentication, authorization, rate limiting, uh, firewall security, all of the hassle that goes into making an API public. App Con API Connect will handle all of that for you. So from here, I can add different security um, steps if I want. So I can add a rate limit if I wanted to. I could add a um, validating uh, jots if I needed to. I'm not going to add any of that as it's not relevant at the moment. And then finally, if uh, to extend the metaphor of this um, example out a little bit, I was to um, open this um, this API out into the wider the wider uh, API marketplace and honor the true uh open baking ethos um if you will i could open this out using the api connect portal uh so users could come to this uh to the portal um and sign up to my product so as you can see just by deploying it through app connect it now appears in my api connect portal i can sign up um to a plan and start using it myself. So I think as we can all agree, that was significantly quicker than um, doing all of this manually. Um, that took me maybe 10 minutes to go through as opposed to several hours. 
Um, so what does this mean for the future? Now, I don't know about you, but as a back-end developer, I'm quite, quite scared of this sort of future. Um, could this be replacing me? Could I not have a job in a few years? Um, but I think, and I, I can hear all of the project managers in the audience desperately uh, going and firing all of their back-end development teams. But I don't think it's quite that time yet. I think there's a few things that's a few barriers to entry, um, which are worth noting. The first one is the number of connectors that are available today. So as you can see from that demo, um, there is a finite number of um, connectors in all of our offerings, um, not just in App Connect. We have a lot of uh, connectors, a lot of very useful connectors, and we're adding connectors all the time. But there's still uncountable number of um, connectors that we don't have that would uh, be useful to you. Um, the second is efficiency and performance. So a number of people here, um, sort of given the theme of the um, event, will be interested in the finance um, sort of side of the industry. And if that is you, you you're caring about microseconds um, per transaction. And just by the very nature of these sort of generic no-code platforms, these aren't going to be as efficient as if you were writing it in C or C++. Um, so if you care about performance, then um, these probably aren't the, aren't the way forward for you. And finally, the kind of classic, the one that everyone hits is migration. If you have a, a, a stable um, API backend at the moment that's written in JavaScript or something along those lines, then moving it to a no-code platform is going to be non-trivial. Um, you're going to introduce risks of regressions, instability, um, missing features, functionality, as well as having to train up all of your team in um, in using these tools. So I think these have a great future. They're already really useful, as you can see from um, from what I've shown today. But I'm not quite. I'm not sure that, at least for the near future, any backend developers like myself have anything to really worry about. That's all I've got to say for today. Um, I'll open the floor to any questions if there are any.